We have a guest, Jim Schwartzkopf is here. We met you the other night, and it was such a great time hanging out with you. Introduce what you do here at Bear Jackson and what you do. Yeah, awesome. Thanks so much for having me, guys. Um, so again, Jim Schwartzkopf, thanks for having me. Um, since uh, 2009, I've been running the Bear Jackson Endorsed Insurance Program, um, and that all came about from Craig Jackson. I was uh, introduced to him back in 2008. Uh, I'm an independent insurance agent. We write insurance all over the country. Uh, we primarily focus on folks with high value homes, collections of all kinds, um, got into car collections just because uh, uh, wealthy people collect cars and things like that. And so we were able to do a great job for Craig. And Craig says, gosh, why don't we introduce this to, uh, to the Barrett Jackson family? And so we have. And since then, it's been, a, uh, uh, it's been a, a great ride. I've been to every Barrett Jackson since 2009. Uh, I've got my son that works with me in, in the, the program as well. Um, we got friends here with Berkeley One, um, which is awesome as far as what they do for an insurance program. Uh, but it's just been, um, it's, it's wonderful. I'm, I'm not a car guy myself, uh, but I love car people. And that's what makes this job really, really fun. Why would, we talk about this quite a bit, but it seems to take on a different note here. When someone has a, a collector car, a car that's in, you know, that they're, they're polishing more than they're driving, why not just insure it with your car insurance. I have car insurance. I could insure it through them. They said they would. I mean, why wouldn't, why do I do, why do I come to a, someone like you? Yeah, the main difference between uh, regular standard car insurance and collector car insurance is how the loss is settled after the loss. And the main thing, there's, there's different terminology, but the, the main, so an actual cash value is what you have for your daily driver. Every time you put miles on it, it, it depreciates. Uh, they're able to put used or aftermarket um, parts back on the car after a loss because their responsibility is to put it back to where it was at the time of the loss. Um, conversely, with collector car insurance, it's, it's done on agreed value, and that means you and the insurance agreed. company. Agreed. You and, you and <laughs> the insurance Yeah, not agreed. Uh, but you, you and the I didn't catch that. Yeah, you, you and the uh, insurance company uh, up front agree on what the value is, and then at the time, you know, God forbid, but at the time of a loss, uh, then they stroke a check for what, what that car was insured for. Um, there's also different coverages in there for, you know, if it's a partial loss, um, you know, using um, the original manufacturer parts that were on the vehicle when available, um, going to the shop of your choice, you know, listening to Craig a minute ago and talking about the Roadster shop or whoever it might be, you know, if somebody built that car, you don't want to take it to your local Chevy dealer to get it repaired. You want to take it back to whoever built that car. Right and get it back to where it was. And, uh, you know, as we watch these natural disasters that are going on, and, and my heart goes out to those folks down in Florida and North Carolina, uh, but there's going to be a lot, you know, a flood is a covered cause of loss for a car. And, you know, even a couple of years ago, there's, you know, a lot of cars are, uh, were totaled out, and that's where this agreed values is a big, big deal. How much of your job is therapeutic? When someone calls you with a loss, there's... There's a part of that that is talking them through what's happening. I, I can tell you a story on, on, I won't tell specifics about it, but a, a very wealthy man lost a very high value car. Um, and when I saw him, he was in tears. He wanted the, you know, the, 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 the insurance company paid him for it, um, big check, uh, but he wanted that car. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't a matter of, hey, you know, I, I, I can go buy another one, because he couldn't. It was a one on one, a, a you know, 30s car. Uh, but yeah, when you look at these, you know, you got some dealers that say, hey, it's, you know, that's my job. I'm just trying to make a few bucks off a car. But when you get true collectors, uh, like Craig was talking about, where it means something to you, you know, it's the car your parents drove or it's the car you always wanted that you couldn't afford when you were a kid. Uh, 79 Corvette was mine. A buddy uh, was able to take his girl to the prom when I was a kid. And I was like, God, how cool is that? Um, so yeah, that's, it's, it's really, and it's a passion. It's just like any other whether, you know, from the insurance perspective, whether you're collecting art, whether you're collecting jewelry, um, wine, whatever it might be, it's your passion. And when you lose something, it, it takes a piece of you. What's the, when I say the word weirdest, what's the weirdest loss? What jumps into your head as just weird or wh how? Uh, please explain how this transpired. Um, well, I could tell you some stories, but I, you know, from, um, yeah, I can't really think of anything that jumps out because you know, we certainly have had some fraud uh, things happen where, sure. you know, what, how did that happen? And then, you know, the insurance companies go and investigate it. And, you know, one thing leads to another. Um, but, yeah, you've, it's, you know, much like anything else in life, there's always something unique that you haven't heard before. And you're like, how did that happen? We talk, and we talked to Berkeley one a lot. What, 
if I buy a car here today, even if it's not super high value, and I'm going to bring it home and I'm, I'm going to get into that, what, what's your, your quick advice on what I should do? You know, ro things that I wouldn't think of, rodents or just, a, you know, how do, I, how do I start this process of having a collector car? Yeah, it, just like anything, it's communication. Talk to, uh, talk to your insurance agent, say, hey, I bought this car, I paid X amount for it. Um, and then walk through and, and have them educate you on how it should be insured. Um, the biggest mistake we see is, is where somebody will go to a direct, uh, they'll call an 800 number or they'll call a program and go direct to them, which is, you know, could be fine, but then they don't talk and they don't coordinate with their, their current uh, insurance agent that's helping with their house and their daily drivers, making sure the liability limits match up, making uninsured, uninsured motors uh, match up. It's just that communication to where you have a true plan on, you know, making sure that that's insured properly so that when, you know, something bad does happen, you're not surprised. And, and that's the thing that you want, that we try to alleviate when we talk to our clients or prospective clients is, hey, let's take out the surprise. Let's, let's ask questions you're not thinking about and answer them so that when something, because, you know, I don't, I don't want to have that phone call where somebody calls me up and says, geez, Jim, this isn't covered. Why didn't we talk about that? And, mm -hmm. Because I've had those phone calls. And if, if you come here to, to this event, it is kind of interesting, I've noticed, and it shouldn't surprise me. I mean, but you can walk in here never having done any of this or known any of it and find people who will help you here every step of the way, shipping it, ensuring it, what you want to do to, and it, you certainly can buy things to add to it here. Right. And that that's truly is, and listening to Craig talk about it, that's what he wanted to build. Um, and so when you do, you know, back uh, just over our shoulder here, uh, we have a table back there where we can talk to people about insurance and we can buy an insurance here if need be. Uh, next to us are a Woodside Credit that can actually finance these vehicles, which is really a unique way to buy them. Uh, gets people into the hobby. Yeah, we were kind of interested yesterday when we saw the monthly payments in yeah. the bottom corner on some of those cars. Yeah. It seems odd, but cool. Yeah, it is. <laughs> and, you know, it's a good use of money and, and things like that. Interest rates are, are pretty good still with those guys. Uh, and then right next to them is the shipping company, Reliable, who's the best in the business of, of transporting vehicles. Uh, and then there's a Canadian shipper right out right over here as well that can take it north of the border. So it really is. Um, and then you you go through the vendor space and you can buy anything from a pillow to a chairlift. I saw they're selling uh, uh, fully enclosed car washes, which is uh, you oh, know, I you did. Put, we walked yeah. by that quick. I wanted to go check yeah. that out and see what I mean, it was all how about. Awesome is that. And then you can you know go to a, a big fishing trip up in Alaska, whatever. That's what you know. As far as the lifestyle, that's the you know. There's a lot to see here other than just the uh, the cars, which are beautiful. So you said you're not a car guy. Have you, have you bought a collector <laughs> since you started doing this? I have not. Okay. Oh. I uh, and I, I, you know, I, I've, I, I'm the kind of guy that one, I, I don't have the medic or the uh, medical, the uh, <laughs> mechanical uh, uh, know-how that you need when both it, sometimes. Yeah, <laughs> when it goes out and breaks down, I'm going to be frustrated. One can cause the other me, for sure. Yeah. For you. And my wife's not going to want to smell the way those cars smell. Oh. And then you know, but then these restos, <laughs> I'd love to have one of those, but th I cannot believe what those things are selling yeah. for. They're beautiful. Uh, but that's what I would want. I would want something that's got to have all the creature comforts and everything about it to, yeah, uh, that, yeah. to really make it enjoyable to drive. And, uh, but boy, I don't, that, those uh, price tags on some of these cars are going to be selling tomorrow is incredible. What was your first car, your very first car? My very first car was my grandmother's uh, Cutlass Supreme Brome that had a 442 <laughs> engine in it. Um, beautiful car, beautiful green with a black uh, Landau top. Uh, claim to fame on that car was I left the, the key used to be on the ignition or on the, the ignition used to be on the dash and My dad always taught me to always leave the keys in the car And I left the keys in the car and all of a sudden I see this car go driving away. So gosh, it looks just like mine And it was mine <laughs> And uh, come to find out uh, a couple days later after they tried to arrest my dad because uh, somebody was robbing gas stations with it and it was, oh <laughs> it, it was found less than 10 miles from our house, parked on a train track, hit by a train. Oh, my. <laughs> and, and they had put 1,000 miles on it in, in like 36 hours. And it was found still 10, in, in central Ohio, found 10 miles from our house. I was hoping it would end with, it turns out your dad was a, oh, that, we, was a we gas had, station we, burglar. And, <laughs> well, that's, that's what, this guy was robbing gas. He was, he was gassing, you know, robbing, taking sure. gas and going. And sure enough, they came like on a Sunday night, they came looking for my dad. His big sheriff came to the door 
And uh, and he's you know asked me, is this Sam Schwarzkopf here? And he's like, yeah. And he's thinking I did something. That totally. And, uh, and so he, and he, it was funny. I mean, funny <laughs> to me. It wasn't funny to him. And now, nowadays, yeah. that car would be a Berkeley One Classic. Oh, it would be. And we, it's oh, green. Yeah. It's green. Yeah. I dress the color. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go green and black. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Russ. White. It's white. He said green. Yeah. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so and how I, many? And I, <laughs> and I look at say, there's a couple cutlasses out there now, and I look at the I think they're more 69s, 70s. Those are just I, I loved those. Is that going to be the kid. one you get if you do? I, you know, I would I, actually I love them Palace for whatever reason. I, I love how they change the body style like almost every year, but they they always had that straight line from front to back. That uh, I'm a symmetric guy, so that's I always, always like that. <laughs> so like an 0456 Impala? No, uh, not about that. <laughs> well, maybe. I remember mom used to drive this. My dad had it from the company, but it was a '79 Olds '88 four-door. Uh, mom called it baby green because it was had that it was that lime ugh, green. <laughs> what a boat! That, that the blue interiors, the, oh, crushed, yeah. the crushed velvet or whatever. Yeah, yeah. like like the yeah, like yeah. the Cordoba. Yeah, <laughs> everything. So how Cushion many seats? <laughs> like pillows. a couch. It's a sleep number. Couch. Hey, yeah. hey, that's a good idea. <laughs> done that yet. Yet. It's a quite the idea. A million yeah. dollars. Look it up. This is probably there. so. So, Jim, <laughs> how many people? I thought I might be crazy, but I thought I heard somebody yesterday rushing through here saying, "I've got to get in that car that we just bought and get it to here at a certain time because somebody's picking up to move it." And he was going like multiple states away. Do a lot of people actually hop in the car that they purchased here and drive it? I, I can uh, I can imagine if it's a super rare muscle car it's going in a trailer but are there a few that they just hop in and drive home there are a lot of them which so they've got to get insured I, I would never well yeah they need to get insured most most insurance policies have a um uh, have a 30-day window where you can add a vehicle so most people do have insurance but if they've never if they've never had the agreed value and setting up um they should do that um but yeah and that kind of blows me away when somebody will get in a car that they don't know anything about or very little about and then go drive it somewhere um, but yeah, we've seen people. We'll, we'll see the car, you know, two miles down the road, sitting on the side of the road because there's mm -hmm. only a splash of gas yeah. in it. Because mm -hmm. you know they don't they don't come with full tanks of gas when you leave here. Um, so yeah, I, I don't. That would be something I wouldn't do, but I've definitely seen it. Well, I, 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 we're, we're happy that's the answer because Chris has offered to drive every car I will, that I've looked at on the block. That he, is my he's, service. He's got yeah. a, he's got, he goes. I'll drive it home. I've got that. Yeah, he, uh, he said I, he can do it in two days. I'll offer it to anyone. If you buy a like a you know, let's we'll put a value on it of off air, but if you buy a car here that is of a, I'll I'll drive it to your house for you, no problem. We should have bought the restored seventy one two Chevy motorhome yesterday. Mm, that that would, you could have slept uh -huh. in the back. It was yeah. that thing was nice. Somebody spent a lot of money on that vehicle. We My could have goodness. just been rolling the studio as we went across the country. <gasps> there, hey, it could have been our that studio. A, gosh, that man. is a that is an interesting thing though, and and that's where agreed value comes in when you have the car, you're getting it because we talked about it a lot yesterday. A car will go up, and no matter how much it sells for, even if it sells for an elite amount, you can see on a lot of them that there is no way that the sale amount will ever cover the amount of work and the the just the money, the just, cash money. Just one second here. In. Can we just take a quick break here? Because they're doing the national anthem. I know that's a big deal to oh. Barrett Jackson. We'll just take a second here and let them do the national anthem because in the background, I'm sure that's going on. That's a good point. Let the bidding begin. That was, uh, I learned something just now. What's that? When you watch a video on a screen at an event, the screen is four milliseconds behind the live. <laughs> we are four milliseconds away from where she was singing because the, our video was completely in sync. sync with the sound. And then hearing the people cheer from the other room, that's a great, I love that feeling, that hearing that. I, I may have derailed your question completely, but I just want to make sure we missed that. I know that the patriotic theme here for Craig Jackson is very, very important. And there's, you know, our country's crazy right now, but it's still our country and we got to be proud, whatever the circumstance, that's for sure. God bless. Well done, Shannon. You, you, know, you I, derailed us there and then, but you brought us right back. Good I, uh, job. Like I said, I've been doing this since 2009 and I make a point and you guys tomorrow, if you haven't seen it yet, you should, you should go in the, the auction hall and actually witness it. It'll bring a tear to your eye yeah. if you start thinking. They got they got a huge flag that that drapes over top of this the block, 
and it's just it's just incredible and uh it, it really you know they, they recognize all the uh, the veterans and and active and first responders and everything else it's really really cool yeah i caught it yesterday it is pretty moving so yeah, yeah. Jim, thanks for uh, coming on the show. And, hey, I, uh, I appreciate you having me. Uh, I thank Berkeley One for allowing me to come here. Uh, great company, doing great things. So thanks a lot. It. Right on. All right, thanks, guys. There thank you. you very thank much. You. And